On this episode, Christian can't stop himself. I have to stop myself. He just wants one thing. I want to just see the sprite. Ah! And then he finally does it. <sighs> Hi everybody, this is Christian. This is the advanced Schmap tutorial on LazyDesk Academy. And we are working on the editor. Now, something I want to do today is I want to actually, because we basically recreated Excel, uh, but I don't want Excel. I want to create, an, <laughs> I want to create an editor that actually makes sense in Pico 8, because I could have had Excel in Excel, right? Um, so I want to actually create an editor that suits this specific purpose that we're working on, which is editing sprites. Uh, that's going to be a big, big goal for today, uh, to create like a fork of that editor, to create like a... Uh, to use the template as a starting point for our actual editor. And that's why we're creating the template. Before we go there, however, there are some little details that I want to fix. Um, and you know, it's kind of like some bound to happen. There's little, um, little, little things creep in, especially if we make creep, you know, sweeping changes the, the way that we did last time around. For example, you see how it doesn't really scroll back anymore, right? It doesn't really scroll back anymore. And that's because we cannot actually select the leftmost entry. Now it scrolls back, but here, uh, here it doesn't scroll back. So we want the scrolling to be a bit more sensitive, a bit more sensitive to the left edge of the screen. Let's do that real quick. Um, update. Uh, where is it? Scroll X. Scroll X. There it is. Um, so if it's smaller than, uh, let's say, twenty. Yeah, now it now it's better. So now it's more centered on the on the on the left side of the screen. Another thing I was thinking about is something I don't like, and it's maybe best to do it now in the template and then later on because we def definitely want to fix it later on. Something I don't like is when I do the export now, it just uses this debug system to show us messages about about what's happening. It would be nice if we had like a built-in, like a proper message system, not just like our janky little debug function. So something that basically says like, um, it, it shows us a message and that message uh, is nicely formatted and it disappears after a while. Because the problem is like when I'm working on this and I'm, I'm, I'm exporting this and I want to keep working on this, now I, it doesn't go away so I have to restart the program. It's kind of like awkward, right? So um, I want maybe the message to slowly fade out or not fade out, but just disappear after a while. Um, something I want to maybe do here for that is um, I'm gonna instead of debug uh, in addition to debug because I want to keep the debug around um, I want to have something an array called MSG uh, and then when we export uh, in IO we have IO but it's really just one <laughs> one function it's kind of like weird but okay maybe the, we're gonna get more later on so instead of um, uh, put um, putting the debug in there. We're gonna go. To, we're gonna go add uh, MSG comma, and then uh, we're gonna add an object into that MSG array, and then there's gonna be a text which is called uh, which is gonna be exported, and then there's gonna be maybe like a timeout, right? So let's go T equals. Um, let's show this for 120 frames, so for two seconds. And that's just gonna be it. And then we're not gonna do a debug, right? Um, right, and then when we're drawing things, here when we're drawing things, um, before we draw the debug, then we're gonna go for um, M in all MSG, we're gonna go through all of the messages, right? And we just gonna, no, actually we're not gonna go through all of the M messages. We're gonna show one message at a time. Uh, so we're gonna go if, uh, hashtag msg is greater than zero then and then we're gonna go um, then we're gonna draw the message on this onto the screen uh, how what is the what is the is this bg bg print is it bg print yeah it's bg print this guy uh, we're gonna draw this on the screen um, for now we're gonna draw, draw it in a corner uh, but later on, I'm going to draw it somewhere else. So we're going to go in msg1.txt. Um, so that's going to take the text of that message. We're going to draw it onto the screen. 
Um, maybe now we're going to use the pink. I think the pink was really nice. So 14. And then we're going to count down the timer of that message. So we're going to go msg one dot t. Is it t? Did I just I always forget? I always forget. <laughs> I'm the worst. Yeah, t. Uh, minus equal one, and we're doing it in a draw function, but that's fine. Like it's just a message. We don't. It just doesn't. It's an editor anyway. It doesn't have to be everything frame perfect. You know, it, it, we don't have to, you know, deal with slowdown and stuff. It's it's fine to be sometimes to be a bit janky here. Uh, and then we're gonna check if the message has run out. So um, if the time has run out, so we're gonna say like if this is equal to zero, then delete del del i msg one. Right, we delete the first entry from that message, message array. Um, yeah, yeah, that seems good. Let's run this. So now, if I export, I'm gonna get the, the message up there, and it disappears after a while. And so, if we go to exports, well, <laughs> it doesn't. We don't see a difference because it's always the same message. So um, just just for testing purposes, we're gonna. Add time to this. Just just make sure we turn it into a string. I'm not sure if this is necessary, but it's whatever. Uh, just so we can see that there's two messages. Export, export. Yeah, the number has changed, and now the messages appear. Okay, good. Uh, only thing I left to do is I want to maybe center. I want to maybe center the message. Mm, we could make it do a center function, but I don't know so far we didn't need it. So so how about we do something like um, so the y position is going to be seventy. Let's go with eighty, and x position is going to be um, sixty four minus uh, length of MSG TXT um, multiplied by um, two point five. No, four. It will be four, but we multiply by two because we want only the half of the width of the text. Um, each letter in a text is four pixels wide. Uh, we multiply that with the number of characters in the text that gives us the length, the width of the text. Um, but we are centering it, so we just want to half of the text. So that's why I multiply it not by four, but by two. Just so they're quick and dirty. Quick and dirty uh, centering here. Yeah, and there it is. It's exported. Maybe, maybe a different background. Ah, whatever. Um, good, good, good. Um, so, or maybe, oh man, I, I'm just, I have to stop myself from from optimizing the this. <laughs> This editor, it's going to be just like a quick and dirty editor. It's not like a release version or anything. I'd rather keep it maybe simple and, and easy. Um, there's one last thing. One last thing I want. I was thinking about. And that is I'm still bothered by the fact that it, it takes a while to get through that thing. Uh, I mean, it's fine that you can go up, but still it feels like uh, that's very tedious, right? Um, and I'm worried that we're gonna have like you know 60 entries in here or 70 entries or so, and this will just take a while to get down there. Um, I'm thinking of actually adding the mouse scroll to that. Like, do we be able to scroll through that thing with a mouse? That's something that's very natural. That's something that you do all the time, right? Um, so let me let me try this. I have looked into the stat. I have I've been digging through the stat entry in the wiki uh, in the wiki in the Pico 8 wiki. Uh, you know, the stat is the all the magical stuff that makes Pico 8 do that it's not supposed to do. Um, and now an update function, I want to try something here. So I, I found this one, stat 36. And we're going to create um, a variable called mscroll. I'm going to, I want to debug this one. I'm going to see what happens when we do mscroll. Debug one equals mscroll. Oh, it's just one minus one. Okay, that's very good. Oh, sometimes it's two. Oh, sometimes it's four even. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Good. Let's try that. Let's try to control um, the 
the table with the m scroll as well. Um, so we're gonna go cur y plus equal m scroll. Seems about right. I just want to make sure. Yeah, it's, that's, that it's done before the upd function. It's scrolling in the wrong direction, but otherwise it's working. I like it. Um, so let's do minus m scroll. Yeah. See, this is way better now. The only problem is I have when I do the m scroll, I actually don't want to. I actually don't want to uh, cycle through. So how about we add the m scroll afterwards, after we use the buttons, and then we're gonna do an emit function again. <laughs> so emit cur y uh, hashtag menu. Right, so a bit of a sandwich here, but but hear me out. So I can when I oh oh oh, what happened? Ah, <laughs> we forgot to assign that to the actual curl. <laughs> Whoops, whoopsie daisy. So you see now we can scroll up and down because like if I want to get down quickly to the bottom of the list, I just want to just I'm going to scroll very quickly, and then I don't want it to loop around. For the mouse, for the scroll wheel, because this is not the scroll wheel is not a precise instrument. <laughs> it's just like just let's go quickly through the stuff. But if I press the buttons, that's a precise instrument, and then I want maybe actually loop around. Okay, good. So I think we are now finished so far. I want to save this. This is now our editor P8. We're gonna encase this in ember, <laughs> and this is gonna be the nucleus of any other editor we're gonna create throughout this development process and you can use this nucleus as well to create to base your own editors off of it but for now i want to move on and create my very own editor that is going to be uh, bespoke that is going to be unique to actually editing the sprites because as i already said before we can have Excel. We don't need to recreate Excel in Pico 8 if that's all what we're going to get. What I want to get is to um, take advantage of the fact that we are actually inside Pico 8. So we can actually, for example, see the price that we're editing. That would be kind of nice. Right, so let's, um, let's pull up the folder. So um, here's our editor. We're going to do a copy of that editor. Uh, now we need to come up with a smart name for the editor. I'm going to call it Sprite Edit. Let's call it Sprite sp sprit Edit. <laughs> sprit edit. Um, previously, I also thought about maybe abbreviating it SPR Edit. But if you read that really quickly, it sounds a bit dirty. So let's just call it Sprite Edit. I think that's a bit more safe for families. Right, and so now let's load. Uh, Right, edit uh, with one E, and then uh, yeah, and then it's it's still the same program. <laughs> I haven't changed anything, but oh, now it's a whole new world. Uh, we can uh, remove this to do. Um, we don't need that anymore. Okay, now um, I want to keep around the table view for now. I just want to keep it around. Maybe it's gonna gonna come come in useful later on, but I want to create a whole new different view of the same data, a whole new different UI to edit our uh, our sprites. And we're gonna call this draw, hmm, well, let's call it list, an update list, okay? Uh, now we, let's create the function and it's gonna be always on top because it's gonna be our main, uh, main view. And update, oops. Okay, okay, okay. Now, if you run this, uh, actually just, just nothing happens because we're just doing nothing. Um, <laughs> so let us just like, let's just let's rethink this a little bit. Let us create some stuff. Um, I would maybe, um, let's do a CLS. So just know that it works. Let's make it a green background. Okay, so we know that this is working. <laughs> I just like get really nervous about certain things. I mean, we can, 
you know, the functionality is still there. We can export things so forth and so forth. So, you know, the stuff is not gone. We just like have to build things from scratch. Um, yeah, I was always thinking about how to do this. I'm not exactly sure what the, what the best way of, of approaching is. I was thinking maybe of actually having two different modes. One mode is just a list of all of, of the sprites, so I can quickly go through all of the sprites. Um, the way I'm, I kind of like the, uh, the previous view with a, with a <laughs> we don't have it anymore. The previous would view with a Excel spreadsheet where you can just scroll wheel through a whole bunch of, of information. I think I want to kind of keep this around. And then I want to maybe have a second mode where I can uh, jump into a sprite and start messing around with the sprite. So like a two two mode kind of kind of UI. I think that's something that I I would prefer. All right. So let's just let's just go for it. So let's in, instead of refresh table, we're gonna go l refresh list. And let's just create a list of all of the all of the uh, sprites. This is gonna be a way simpler list. This is gonna be a way simpler function than than this one. And again, I'm, I'm still thinking about maybe putting this, maybe put this into, let's just call it UI. I'm gonna put it into its own, uh, because it's kind of like an important function, and, and these are important functions, right? So we're gonna call refresh uh, list, uh, and it is, this will just create the menu for, it's just gonna be a bunch of uh, entries for, um, for the different sprites. Um, so we're gonna loop through the data, yes, yes, we are actually not at any given point. We are actually not interested in uh, in writing any any entries. Something like this. Uh, we definitely maybe want to add, add a new line. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So here is where we just we just yeah we're gonna do something like this and we're just gonna call this um, we remove the color this is this is the the line that drew the uh, labels for each individual line the number of the label and we these this time around these will become our main main entry it's just gonna be individual cells each cell will be just one line we will be responsible for one sprite. Um, and here in the text, we're just going to write sprite, and then uh, I. I think I. Yeah, yeah, yeah I. Um, now, man, I think, I think, I think, I think we need to, we need to come to terms with the jank here happening. Actually, uh, it might be, it might actually not matter at all. Uh, yeah, let's just like leave it like this. Um, the command is going to be edit spur um, because when we uh, execute this it will actually edit the sprite um, and cmd cmdy is going to be i uh, the position is okay for now yeah so this is going to be now a refresh list um, now let us draw that list to the screen. So th this is now the draw function here. It's empty right now. Wait, did I CLS in the update function? I did CLS in the update function. I am so sorry. <laughs> uh, let us CLS here. And then let us just draw this and see this thing, this thing here. I might be thinking that this might be actually something universal a little bit. Um, because there's nothing here. There's not necessarily anything here that's unique to um, to that Excel sprite sheet. So we might actually just, um, yeah. How are we going to do this? We're gonna we're gonna create a draw table function. Then we're gonna do a CLS for the draw draw table. But here um, we're gonna call this not a draw table, but a draw and menu. And when we're drawing the table, that is what was our previous view, uh, and then we're just gonna draw the menu here and that's gonna be all this rest here. Like all this stuff, we're just gonna draw here. Because this is, takes care of drawing uh, the text entry to the right position. And this just dumps all the information from the menu onto the screen. And that's the true, in, in the draw table, uh, mode in the Excel mode and our new mode as well. So we can just reuse this all this code and our actual draw functions are going to be so much simpler. 
<sighs> what is this? What is this? What is happening? There is some a line here that's not cool. Uh, I probably com forgot the comma somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. It just works. Now, I immediately press the button and the button does nothing. So <laughs> the button did nothing. So uh, let us do... Let us do uh, the buttons here. And I'm going to copy this stuff out, but I'm going to actually not reuse this code. I'm going to actually duplicate it um, because I, I, that's something I actually want to maybe, maybe think about a little bit. Let me, let me think about this. Yeah, copy this code because I want to maybe uh, edit this code a little bit. Because some things here are different. For example, uh, for example, I don't actually need to move things sideways at all, never. So we don't need that, we need to be concerned with that kind of stuff. Um, the scrolling is fine. The scrolling is fine. And um, cur x equal, we're gonna, this is not gonna be a multiple rows in our, in our menu here right now. So maybe we're gonna add them later, but yeah. Right, we can scroll through all our sprites. Uh, it's important that we see the number of the sprite because I think uh, it, it's, it's, it's a very important aspect of, of the sprites will reference each other. So I think it's very important to be able to quickly, you know, scroll through the sprites and see what number, what sprite is, right? I, I am a little bit concerned that this is taking a lot of space. So let's maybe um, make this list a little bit more compact. Um, mm, 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 let's see. Let's go into UI. Uh, let's not call it Sprite, but let's just call it SPR. Um, and let's bring it closer to the edge of the screen. Um, like this. Yeah, uh, it, needs to be go, it needs to go higher. Oh, right, 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 right. So it must, which should be minus six. Minus six. Yeah, see now, now it's a bit more hugging the, the edges a little bit more. Uh, and maybe also the distance, we, we don't maybe need to separate the individual lines. And so maybe um, it's not gonna be um, eight times I, but maybe just uh, seven times I, how, do, how does that look? Uh, maybe, maybe even less, maybe six times I. Yeah, it's a bit close together now. And <laughs> this is like all the way down there, that's funny. Um, so let's go with six plus six, um, and then plus one, just for good measure. Ah, uh, plus two. So the plus button is kind of like separate from the, from the rest of the list. Yeah, that's good. Uh, then separate it from the top of the screen a little bit more. Like this. Well, even more now. We, we did, made some changes here. Uh, no, four, four, that's good. Right, a bit of a tightly packed list, but I think I think that, that makes sense for, for this situation. Okay, so now we have like this huge list of sprites and I, I know it doesn't make sense that we have SPR, right? It, we could just like write in the number, but that's something that we might actually later change. Um, we're gonna get there, we're gonna get there. Um, for now, I, what I wanted to do is, um, before, like, obviously interacting doesn't do anything and adding a new line also doesn't do anything. Um, we're gonna get there. Uh, but first I want to actually see the actual sprite. That's the whole reason why we're doing this in Pico 8. I want to just see the sprite. Ah! Okay, so I am now, uh, I, I opened up the, the couch map uh, in a different window and I can paste in the MSPR function from our couch map and close it now. And so, yeah, we can just like, Use this now. Um, this function uses the MSPR array, right? Use the MSPR array. And it's kind of weird, right? Because our array that we're working with, we called it data, right? But the MySPR also exists. And those are referencing the same array, right? So it's just like to do two different names for the same array that's underneath. This is like this by reference thing. This equal sign doesn't duplicate that array and creates a second array called data. It's this array stays in memory, in, in the in computer's memory. We just now have two variables that point to the same array. 
the um, variable um, data and the old variable mySPR are both pointing to the same array. So we can just still uh, call that array mySPR the way this function uses the mySPR variable here. And it should, hopefully, still work. Um, so in the draw function, let us just go like MSPR. Um, how does that even work? <laughs> so we need to supply a number for the spread that we're drawing in a x and y position. So the number is, I don't know, um, but the position is definitely going to be 63, 63. Right, so now we just have to figure out the number of the spread that we're supposed to draw. And we're going to get that by um, checking out by checking out the menu that we're calling selecting. Right, if there's a menu there. Um, and we're going to go if my MNU, if the, that has, if that menu has a CMDY, if that has a CMDY, the CMDY refers to, you know, which sprite we are, we, this menu item is referring to. If we have a CMDY, then we're just going to, we're just going to draw that CMDY. We're going to draw that sprite number because the CMDY, the entry in the in our database, each entry, the number of each entry is the number of that sprite. <sighs> it's working! It's working! And see, it's not drawing any sprite when we select that last, that last button because that button has doesn't have a y value associated with it so in this case we're just not drawing anything oh isn't that awesome isn't that just like the best and the cool thing is now for example in this kind of view we can quickly step through an animation with our cursor keys and we can quickly preview an animation this is a tremendous tool so for example here we can see how explosions work, if they're aligned uh, with each other properly, if the offset works, right? We can see in this menu a lot of cool things. This, this kind of view changes things dramatically. Um, there's some little UI things that I, you know, I, I kind of don't like how we have just one background because we might have sprites that use this color as part of their Part of the do we have this? Well, I guess this uses you know this uh, this sprite this UFO sprite uses that dark red color as as some pixels. So we're not quite sure which pixel is transparent and which isn't. Uh, so in order to do that, I like to maybe add like a checkerboard background to our our background. <laughs> um, and we're gonna do this. I have I have a pattern here that I uh, prepared. We're gonna have this checkerboard. This is not a. This is a two times two checkerboard. So it's not like individual pixels, but chunks of two times two pixels. It's just like a fill, fill pattern. And then we're gonna rect fill uh, 0, 0, 127, 127. And then a 33 is the number, as the color I came up with, that I think was good. See, this is good. Oh, we have to uh, fill P. We have to delete it again afterwards. <laughs> okay, see, this is good. This is good. This is looking good. Um, another thing I want to maybe change here is now I want to really make really clear where um, where the center of the sprite is because quite often this is like an important thing. So let me let me let me add that. So um, we, after we draw the sprite, we're going to do like a P set. 63, 63. Um, let's make it red for now. See, that's good. We have a, like a little red thing here. But sometimes red is not enough. Sometimes we might have sprites like this, like uh, now I don't, I'm not really sure where the center is, right? So it might be wise if the, if that, if that, um, that button would maybe change colors or blink. Um, I think like it's very simple 
choice here is we're gonna just make a random value from a bunch of available values. So eight, um, 13, seven, uh, maybe 15, just like very bright values in general. So now you see it now we have like a, this little blinking. It's maybe a bit, a bit, a bit crass, but it's just like one single pink pixel. So I don't think it will, it will matter that much. Um, maybe, maybe we're gonna do something like if time. We did that before, right? If time um, modulo one. So we're just gonna get basically the the comma value of the time. Oops. If that is smaller than zero point five, let's see how how that works. Just uh, blinking, maybe it might more might make more sense. Yeah, because I sometimes want to see the original pixel, right? I kind of like that. Maybe a bit a bit faster. We had it faster for the for the cursor, right? Okay, that's good. And maybe to just just to because I just really want to drill it home. Um, I want to really clarify where the center of the sprite is. It's going to be kind of like an important thing. So maybe we can draw like um, dotted lines, and the center uh, underneath the sprite. So in the center is going to be uh, at the cross section. Um, so we're going to do something like. Uh, Gonna make a pattern like this. We're gonna find a pattern. Where's the pattern? I always, I'm not always looking for that pattern. We have to be, be more systematic. There it is. There it is. What was it? N, M, it was on the bottom somewhere here. There, there, there. B, B like Becker board. <laughs> uh, right. So fill P, and then we're gonna draw a line from uh, 63 zero to 127. Uh, no, 63. Seven, uh, hundred twenty-seven, uh, and then it's good. Let's let's put it like light gray six, and I'm gonna make another line that goes from zero, oops, zero, sixty-three to hundred twenty-seven, sixty-three, and then again we're gonna remove the Right. Ooh, maybe a bit too bright. What if we make it this color, 13? Yeah, that seems, seems more natural. Okay, so now we have like this very good, very clear positioning system for our sprite, so we know exactly where the, the center of the sprite is. Good. What else? Yeah, let's, let's try to start adding the functionality. Um, so, so here at the, at the bottom, there's a plus and I want, if I pr press the plus button, I want a new sprite to be created. Um, we already have the UI here. That is, that, that command is called new line and we're just gonna add that command in here. We're gonna go here and update list function. And then here we're gonna go if btnp x, so if we're interacting with this, then um, and then uh, it's called new line. I just want to make sure that I remember this. And then we're going to do the same thing as we did here. We're going to grab the menu item we are currently selecting. Um, and we're going to say like if if that menu item dot cmd if that's new line, then uh, else if we can already set up the next command that will be available, which is this one. Um, and that is going to be edit spur. Err, update. And if it's edit spur, then. And yeah, for the new line, here's where we're creating new stuff. And that's going to be the, kind of like basically the same thing as we did. We're adding a, just a new, new line in here, right? So we're going to do this. And that's going to be, that's, that's, that's all there is. That's all there is. But this time I actually want to maybe add uh, six entries because that's, we're all going to need all, because we're going to do this, I think we will create an error. Let's, let's see how that works. Oops. Oh yeah, yeah, equals equals. 
still making that mistake. You think that's a newbie mistake, but nah, nah. We, you, I'm gonna make it until 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 the end of my days. Okay, so I'm I'm pressing the button now, and see it will it it runs an error. Why? Uh, because we created an an array, we created a sprite that is incomplete. It doesn't have enough information for our sprite system to draw that. So we want to maybe um, create enough entries here. Uh, four, five, six. Um, and we need a six entries for a sprite to be valid, to not cre create any kind of problems. And those six entries are gonna be X and Y position of the sprite on the sprite sheet, width and height and offset. Bam, we created sprite number 27, nice. We now obviously don't have a way to del easily delete a sprite here, right? It's my, and I don't, I'm not really sure how to do that. Um, but you know, for now, I'm not gonna actually, I'm gonna not gonna lose sleep over that. I'm not, not necessarily the one to delete things just yet. We're gonna think about the deleting when we're gonna think about deleting. Um, something I'm more interested in is actually hooking up the uh, edit sprite function. So let us now create a new mode. I'm gonna call it, call it draw edit. <laughs> draw edit. And here we're gonna create update, update. Oh, update edit, yeah, update edit. And then here uh, we're gonna actually create a, yeah, refresh list, refresh edit. So we're gonna duplicate all those functions. And here an update list function uh, where we uh, edit the sprite. And if that happens, we're gonna, uh, first of all, we're gonna set UPD to uh, update edit. And we're gonna set DRW to uh, draw edit, right? Um, but also I want to maybe somehow remember, I wanna somehow remember which sprite we're editing right now because now we want to switch to a mode where the, all the UI that is visible in the screen will always relate to just one sprite and that's the sprite that we're editing here right now. So maybe we're just gonna create a variable called um, um, Cell spur, so the selected sprite. Is that something that we're using somewhere here? Oops. No. Okay. So let's uh, let's set cell spur to my menu. CMDY. Just want to make sure that yeah we have CMDY. Okay. So I want to. Um, to select that, to set my reminder here to CMDY. And now, if I run this, so if I select on something, absolutely nothing happens. Why? Why do, uh, now the menu becomes completely unresponsive. Well, <laughs> it's because uh, we're refreshing the, the menu, but the menu is not doing anything. If we reset the menu, then at least, at least, Oh, actually, also that nothing happens here as well. <laughs> this is a very, very, uh, uh, very stark new mode. Let's 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 set up the, this mode here. So refresh edit here. Um, mm -hmm, an update function. Yeah, we have gonna have a refresh edit as well. Refresh edit. And here, when we draw things, we actually want to draw all this stuff. We might put it in an extra function, but I don't care that much right now. We are, we're gonna do it later on. And then I actually want, also want to draw the sprite that we're currently editing. Um, this, and I do want to draw the menu, yes. Very similar to the previous one. Uh, but this time I'm not drawing the thing that is being selected by our menu, uh, but instead I want to draw um, cell spur the sprite that we selected. I want to draw this to the screen. Okay, let's try that. So sprite number four, bam. We see the sprite. It's not, the thing is not blinking. Oh yeah, 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 because we have this here. We see the sprite. 
that we're editing. But now we have to come up with a menu that allows us to edit this sprite. And that's something that will happen in the doggy zone. That's right, in the doggy zone. Yes, so you know where this is going. Um, right, so the next thing I wanted to do is I want to start here on a refresh, ed refresh edit. That's the thing that will create the menu, the, the UI to edit an individual sprite. And I want you to start putting in all the boxes, all the little buttons that will allow you to edit a single individual sprite. So that is going to be step number one, create the menu or the UI to edit a sprite. And then not just like design it, but actually also maybe start and making it work, make, make, make it actually do the things that it's supposed to be doing. And the second little the challenge, and I actually want to see your solutions for this because I'm not exactly sure how, how I want to approach this, is also thinking a bit a little bit about how we can delete a sprite. So if that's something that we're going to do on this screen or maybe in this, when you go into a sprite, maybe there's going to be like a delete the sprite button. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to approach this, something that you might also want to think about. So these are going to be the challenges for the doggy zone. And for now, let's move on to this last part in each individual video where I say, Hello and thank you for supporting me on Coffee for all those people who are supporting me on coffee.com slash lazydes. Thank you so much for making the show possible. And as always, I want to maybe highlight some comments, some things, some smart things that people wrote underneath the comments. This one is from the Zetekai in episode 17. Episode 17 has been quite, quite a popular episode to comment on and write smart things. Uh, so the Zetekai writes, um, very petty suggestion, a single rogue cow or perhaps a pear should be placed at the edge of the first cliffs or may along the first road just to get a cow or two on the screen before you get to the pastures, uh, which would make a theme more prominent to players' minds. Uh, why is the cow there? Who knows? Maybe it escaped from the farm? That kind of environmental storytelling can help a lot with player engagement. Uh, I do agree. Um, we have to we have to pay attention to this as we actually establish uh, as we actually create the um, the actual game. Uh, kind of make sure that you know that the storytelling works as intended, and that we might want to maybe later on introduce a cow um, uh, more, a bit more earlier. The reason why I didn't set up a pasture at, directly at the cliff is that it like I, I started out like that. I actually initially had a, a pasture right there at the cliff. But it felt really wrong. It, it felt like that, that, that that's not where you would put a pasture. Um, so that felt like a, a quite unusual situation. That already felt like we skipped the introduction. We skipped the introduction and went immediately to kind of some kind of weird emergency situation where cows are at the cliff. Um, or like it felt like just like a not very realistic situation where that you wouldn't put a cat pasture there. Uh, I was a bit, it didn't feel right. I, I, I wanted maybe to introduce first like slowly, like this is now forest and then we go over the forest and then we get to the farm. But I agree that maybe the, the cows are now a bit too late. And I'm, I'm, that's something that certainly I'm aware of. Maybe we're gonna have some kind of like little animation with the cows and so forth. Good thinking there by Zetikai. Yes, yes, yes. So our editor, our sprite editor is coming together. Now things are starting to look really cool. Um, next episode, we're gonna dive into, you know, the nitty gritty details of creating the, the actual UI to edit an individual sprite. And then uh, might be even the last or second to last episode talking about editors. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.